Let's talk a little bit about the early medieval sax. Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatura and Easton Antique Arms. Now this is a beautiful recreation of an Anglo-Saxon style, late Anglo-Saxon in fact, broken back sax. There's examples you can find in the British Museum, Museum of London, uh, numerous ones found archaeologically from England. And this is a recreation by um, Todd at Todd's Workshop. Um, in fact, the blade is by Paul Binns and in fact the, uh, the grip here, the hilt, is made by, um, made by Todd. So... The thing that I want to say is, so I had a discussion today, as it happens, talking about the sax, or siax, as some people would say it, because it's written siax. I believe it's probably, etymologically speaking, supposed to be said sax, so hence I call it sax. And a lot of people are under the um, idea that the sax gives the name to the Saxons, or the Saxons give their name to the sax. Fundamentally, I don't think there's very much evidence to back this up. I think this is more or less a Victorian antiquarian, so early archaeologist, pre-archaeologist, archaeologist idea, a theory, and it's not really backed up by much evidence. Moreover, I really want to get across to you that the sax is certainly not only an Anglo-Saxon tool, and I'm not calling it a weapon, I'll come back to that in a second. In fact, the sax has various different forms. This is actually a late form. So this form of broken back sax is actually really something we find right at the end of the Anglo-Saxon period, just in the lead up to the Norman conquest, really. So the name for the Saxons, and the, indeed the name for Saxony, the Saxons, the Anglo-Saxons were called that because of the, so supposedly according to Bede anyway, the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jutes who made up a smaller percentage of them. So there's this idea amongst the English, as we now know them, that the Anglo-Saxons come from the people of the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jutes. Saxony obviously is in northern Germany. The Angles were also supposed to be from northern Germany, and the Jutes were from the base of Denmark. So we're talking really about the top of Germany and the bottom of Denmark, and perhaps a little bit into the Netherlands. And there's this idea that there was this mass migration of people uh, from that area into England after the Romans left. Now that is a massive topic, and in fact there are entire books uh, written purely on this. It's an incredibly complicated topic, so I'm not going to get into there. But for the purposes of this video, all you need to know is that forms of sax were used all over Northern Europe by vast <laughs> array of people. Yes, they were used in England, but they were also used in what's now France, they were used all over what's now Germany, the Netherlands, Scandinavia. Um, northern Italy, all over. So basically all of northern and, well, some even central um, Europe used forms of knife that we can call a sax. And yes, there are variations. So if we look at a Frankish, so what became France later on and parts of Germany, if we look at a Frankish sax, there might be tendencies that are a little bit different to one you might find in England from the same period. But this type of sax, so if you watch a modern show like Forged in Fire or you look at modern knife design, people, when they talk about a sax style blade, so bear in mind the edges on this side, will often be talking about this. And this is specifically one type, one group of saxes known as a broken back sax. This is just one type. There are a whole bunch of other types and they were used all over Europe. So the sax isn't just a Saxon thing, <laughs> but moreover, um, the, the name for it seems to post-date the existence of the Saxons. So the Saxons are referred to as a group of people before we have references to the sax as a tool. But here's the other thing to say as well. Why do I keep calling this a tool? Because we actually don't have very much evidence for these being used in combat. Now, that's a little bit difficult to unpack because obviously kitchen knives are used in combat on a daily basis up and you know all over the world. So something could be a utilitarian belt knife, like a hunting knife, or it could be a kitchen knife and still be used in combat. So the reason why I'm reluctant to call this a weapon is because my belief is that the majority of saxes were actually what we would kind of call an everyday carry knife, like a bowie knife or a hunting knife. They were used in hunting contexts, they were worn in traveling. Uh, they weren't necessarily carried specifically in war. If we look at the w list of war gear for most of the um, migration era, early medieval period, what some people call the Dark Ages, uh, then actually, you know, the predominant weapons are the, um, the spear, the sword, the axe, the shield. 
the sax doesn't really get much of a look in and in fact we do see the sax in art often carried in a civilian environment because people don't walk around with swords in that period very much or spears so my belief is that it's primarily an everyday carry tool slash self-defense weapon and self-defense against animals as well as humans uh, not primarily a weapon of war. That being said, there are definitely war versions and we have forms of what are sometimes referred to as lang sax uh, and there's types of sword hilted sax as well, particularly from Scandinavia, um, particularly from Norway rather, um, where I do think, yes, definitely that, that's a weapon. So it's a spectrum. It's not a black and white polarized thing. I think some saxes, some saxes are really small and they're very clearly eating knives and just, you know, pocket knives basically. So the sax can be anything from a small knife, small eating knife, through to a sort of everyday carry wood, you know, woodsman or hunting knife, uh, all the way up to a battlefield weapon, yes. But most saxes were just utilitarian knives. So there we go. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stick with those two main points. But number one, um, or three points really. Number one, I don't think the Siax or Sax gives its name to the Saxons or comes from the Saxons because it was a knife to be found all over Europe and not specific to the Saxons. Uh, number two, this style of sax is specifically an Anglo-Saxon broken back sax, uh, really of the 11th century, maybe late 10th century. So that is a very specific design and lots of saxes don't have that shape. They actually have more uh, of a curved um, angle to them uh, with the point more central in Frankish saxes, for example, Merovingian ones. Um, and finally, I'm not convinced that saxes were primarily, overall, weapons. I think most saxes were simply utilitarian knives. Some saxes were perhaps more for hunting and some, a minority, were for war or were incidentally used in fighting because they were an everyday weapon and someone got into a fight and happened to use what was on their belt, which was one of these. Anyway, I hope that has um, given you some new ways of looking at the sax. And I do encourage you to look up, for example, Frankish sax or Merovingian sax. And you'll see we've got very different blade forms uh, and, and styles and some of decoration. Some of them even have little pommels on to, to these. And I hate it when people refer to a Viking sax as well like that's a specific thing um, so the sax really is just the northern european knife of the early medieval period cheers for watching hope i see you back on the channel really really soon i have been matt easton and i'll continue to be see you next time thanks for watching we've got extra videos on patreon please give our facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already cheers folks